Hello all. Today we would be discussing about cloud computing. I am sure each one of us is familiar with this, either knowingly or unknowingly. Is there anybody here who would have not used either Hotmail or Yahoo or one of these emails which are available? Well, these are all cloud computing. Do we use Google? This is again cloud computing. So basically, practically everybody who understands technology or who does not understand technology has now become avid user of cloud computing. But that is as an end user. Despite that, whenever there is something so great which is getting formed, there is a complexity behind it and that is what we as technology guys handle. This particular course begins with the introduction to cloud computing because we need to be very clear with the fundamentals before we really go ahead, handle these complexities and deploy a cloud infrastructure. So the agenda for the next few minutes that I'm going to be talking about is the introduction, which I already talked about. We would be looking at some of the definitions in this as to how is cloud computing defined today. We would be looking at uh, some of the evolution patterns in which cloud has really come up. At the same time, we would actually deal with the state of the cloud computing. When I say the state of the cloud computing, where exactly is this on the technological front? How exact exactly is this perceived by the technology people and by the end users? So, as a part of the state, we would be handling perceptions, and what exactly is the reality? What is the driving force towards cloud computing? What are the different types of cloud platforms which are available? How do we really categorize it? And finally, some examples. Let's start with the definitions. This is something which I think we can read together. It says, cloud computing is the realization of long head dream of utility computing. We will just get back on utility computing in the next few minutes. Another important point here is, it's a metaphor for internet. Whatever mail clients we talked about, they are all used over the internet. There is a connectivity required. So, more or less, whenever we are dealing with the cloud, we are dealing with the internet. Third thing is the provisioning of the services. Please note the word services. We are going to be using this on and off and I will explain what is this all about in a timely, near, on instant, on demand manner. The reason I say near on instant, because at any point of time, technology and manual gaps in terms of time intervention is always going to be there to allow the scaling up and down of resources. Again, what is this? We would see in the next few slides. It is an emerging computing technology that uses the internet and central remote servers to maintain data and applications which means it takes us to the different categories and different types of clouds, right? But we still define this in a different way. Cloud computing is internet-based computing, which we talked about, whereby shared resources. When we say shared resources, everything in cloud is shared. Software and information are provided to computers and other devices on demand, just like the electricity grid. So what happens? Typically for the electric bill or for the mobile bills, we just have a scheme or we just take a prepaid card or we use the electricity or we use the pipe gas and whatever we use is metered. Similarly, it's all metered in certain aspects of cloud. By the end of the usage, the meter readings are taken and you are charged accordingly as per the respective charge accounts. Again, it is a culmination of numerous attempts at large-scale computing with seamless access to virtually limitless resources. Cloud has become so exhaustive and so many users and so many applications. So, how is all this handled at the backend? So, it seems as if there is no limit to the resources which is available to the cloud today. It is made of various components like on-demand computing, utility computing, ubiquitous computing, autonomic computing, platform computing, edge computing, elastic computing, and grid computing. In interest of 
the time I may not be getting into the details of each one of it, but a simple statement on Wikipedia would explain most of this. How did it evolve? We all know that we are users today, but it started somewhere. Way back, even before 1990s, the telecommunication companies which were springing up, they used to offer point-to-point -point data circuits, you know. They used to be having very limited circuits in which they used to work. And then they came out with virtual private networks. Now, quality of service really went high, at, and the cost really started coming down. And over a period of time now, we know how telecommunication costs has really come down. Looking at this, IBM in 1950, they started with something called as remote job entry process. So there used to be job entries done, which was done absolutely remotely. And it was a new concept at that point of time. Today, I think we all work in virtual environments. We all work in collaborations from different locations, etc, etc. And these are all extensions of remote job entry. Finally, because these used to be never termed as cloud. So finally, in 2006, Amazon came up and it defined it as a cloud and it gave its first public cloud. Again, why I say public cloud? Because there are different categories of cloud which we're going to be discussing. However, it was the first public cloud that Amazon released, which was known as Amazon Web Service and it still exists. So typically, how did cloud evolve? Initially, for every application, there used to be a different server. It used to be dedicated, it used to be static. So, if the server goes down, the application is down. If the application does not exist, the server is of no use. So, everything was very tightly coupled. Later on, it came down and you started having the grids. So, when you started having the grids, you started sharing the resources and doing optimization on the resources. During the grids, there were a lot of appliances. Uh, when I say appliances, these are boxed units which actually does certain, you know, it addresses certain areas of your uh, computing needs. For example, today we talk about Exalogic and Exadata, which are some of those appliances from Oracle. We have XML acceleration appliances from uh, IBM and many such appliances. When this grid computing happened, that is the time IT and a lot of businesses started thinking about how to use this grid and have the setup so that they can really take worth of this optimized architecture. And to do this, obviously, there were a lot of other areas which came into picture, which were self service and chargebacks and policy based resource management. Why? Because this was a private cloud. Now, when we say private cloud, it is within an enterprise. So in the enterprise, different departments would access that. So somebody would want to provision, not provision. How would the role of IT be simplified? Then obviously resources, somebody needs some access, the access control that we talk about, identity management, etc. Then obviously every department is a cost center. So they need to have a charge back in place and then capacity planning because at the end of it, the servers within the enterprise had to be shared in such a way that the businesses ran sharing the same resources. Finally, the public cloud evolved. The moment public cloud evolved, it had three different components. Most of the times that we actually encounter public cloud is the SaaS layer, but behind that always is the PaaS and ES. SaaS stands for software as a service, PaaS stands for platform as a service, and ES stands for infrastructure as a service. So if you notice, everything in cloud is all about services. When public clouds were there, when private clouds were there, enterprises wanted to make use of the public clouds, but at the same time, they wanted to have certain aspects of the data and aspects of the business, which they still wanted to keep control on. Because the moment it went to public, it was felt that they lost control on it. So that's how hybrid clouds were defined. It was actually a federation of the clouds. So the private clouds and public clouds could work in conjunction. And finally, the terms like cloud bursting came in. So if whatever is the capacity that you have within your cloud, which is available as a private cloud, and if you still need more resources, you could immediately connect to a public cloud and start using the resources there. Many such concepts on cloud bursting started evolving thereafter. Now, why exactly did cloud really start booming so strongly over the last decade or so? You know, the technology really came up very fast, very fast. 
we now have multi 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 core processors there was a time we used to talk about a processor then dual core processors and today quad core octa core hexa core you talk about it then graphic processors softwares the way software is handled the way software is designed virtualization bandwidth fiber optics has become so cheap and been available for the strong bandwidth networks that these organizations need a lot of other aspects like mobility coming into picture a lot of other devices like tablets etc coming into picture and internet being in the hands of everybody all of this really made cloud very strongly acceptable in a very very rapid pace cloud computing idly speaking is composed of three primary fundamentals one is grid computing grid computing as we uh, referred to uh, wherein you actually have a lot of shared resources which can actually be you know automated in terms of the way it is being distributed which is known as autonomic computing second one is the utility computing we talked about chargebacks something like a gas line so basically if you look at utility computing yes utility wise 